first idea is actually not about what we're going to look at, but an idea that's very, very um, common sense to us, which is distance. Okay? So what is distance? Simple, simple idea. Distance is just a length that's been traveled, right? As opposed to a length which has been measured, right? A distance which is a length which you've gone from one place to another, okay? So I'm going to call, I'm going to define distance as a total length traveled. Okay? Now, once you understand that, remember, this is about connecting um, and comparing these different changing quantities. So if we say, okay, well distance, that's a quantity and it can change. We call the change of distance with respect to the change in time, we call that speed. So speed is simply about, we actually we have this triangle, right, which you've learned all the way back in, in stage four science, right, which is distance over time. Yes? Speed is the name that we give to the comparison in change between distance and time. Okay. Now the important thing you need to understand here, and there's a big distinction between this and the next two dot points which are parallel to it. The important thing here is that direction doesn't matter. I don't care which direction you're facing you. If you're running, 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 whichever you're facing, you're still traveling distance. So therefore you still have a speed of some kind. Okay? Distance and therefore speed can be zero or positive, but there's no such thing as negative speed or negative distance, right? If you traveled in a direction and then you've traveled back, you've just covered more length, okay? So this, irrespective of direction. But we want to be a little finer with this, and we have mathematics to understand direction. So if you add direction to distance, very connected idea, and I've already named it, we call this displacement, okay? So displacement is obviously connected to distance, but like I said, it's more about position. So I would describe displacement as position as compared to where you started. Position compared to starting point. Okay? Now what this means is if you're doing if you're running laps of an oval, okay, once you complete a single lap, you have gone a certain distance, right? But once you've completed that lap and started, ended back where you started, your displacement at that instant in time is zero because your position compared to your starting point is where well, you are exactly where you started. So you currently, at that point, have zero displacement. You have distance, you have speed, but your displacement is, is zero. And does that mean that every single day you wake up and you go back to the same bed, right? That means you, you, you travel no... Yeah, your total displacement is zero, okay? Uh, so this idea, therefore, if you think about how distance is changing over time, we call that speed. If you think about how displacement is, dis is changing over time, we call that velocity. Okay? So this is about change in displacement over change in time. Okay? Now, to try and keep things consistent with what we looked at before, um, distance is about a location, right? Uh, displacement is about a location. So we tend to give the name to this, we tend to call this our x variable, right? Um, they don't call it d because d tends to more be distance, and x fits into our coordinate system. The only catch with this is that if you're thinking about how something is moving over time, you've got an x axis and you've got a time axis. An x-axis, displacement, and a time axis. Now, when we think about a normal set of coordinate axes, right, we usually have the x as the horizontal thing, and we call the y, the, the vertical axis, a y axis, right? It's just the other one, okay? But since we pretty much universally think about time going from left to right, like this is just like a chronological thing, because we read from left to right, we tend to call this axis the time axis, which means that x, the displacement, gets put onto the vertical. That's a bit weird. Students confuse this because they're like, wait, but I'm so used to X being horizontal. Yes, it might be horizontal, but it could just easily be, be vertical. Remember when I talked about that boat moving up and down, okay? So this could be up, down, it could be left, right? Whatever you want, it's about your position relative to where you started, okay? <coughs> now I should point out, see this, right? This is really a statement about gradient. 
Yes, this is like dy over dx, right? Because it's change, what you're really calculating over here is an average velocity. Okay, there's got to be some change in time. Now we'll get to, I mean, the fact that we have calculus means I don't have to think about an interval of time. I can think about an instant of time an instant versus an interval. But at the moment, if there's a change in time, then time has passed, you're thinking about the average velocity over that, um, over that little time. So how would you actually calculate this? Well, the change in displacement, you've got an x value where you started and an x value where you ended, right? So you'd say, well, okay, I just want to compare those. It's just the change, right? And in the same way, there's going to be a time that corresponds to each of those displacements. So you want to work out the change between those as well. Okay? And you will recognize this as the gradient formula, right? y2 minus y1 on x2 minus x1. It's just that time is our horizontal axis here, so that's why it's on the bottom. Does that make sense? Okay, now like I said, the difference between these two things is whether you are interested in direction or not. Okay? So displacement can be negative. I can go in the opposite direction from which way I'm facing. Okay? Uh, and it's the same thing with velocity. So here, direction is important. 